My name's Colin Hinsey. I work for Pinion Advisory and I work as a viticulture and agribusiness consultant. I'm Richard Hamilton from Hamilton Viticulture. Colin and I have known each other for a long, long time. We have similar interests in uh, providing information for growers, so we thought we'd collaborate on this project. The fires that occurred in the Adelaide Hills in December 2019 were of a size and scale that hadn't been seen by industry before. There had been a little bit of research done in some vineyards that had fire damage late in the season. And there was one case study from a couple of years prior in the northern Adelaide Hills. But outside of that, there was very little knowledge of what to do when vineyards burn. It presented for us an opportunity to learn. That's where we wanted to make the most of a bad situation to create a bank of knowledge that would help inform the industry in the future. Immediately after the fire, growers really wanted to know what to do. They wanted to know what the best actions were for them to take. There was obviously general consensus of getting water connected back to vineyards straight away to, to get them back in the growing phase, but it was really unknown what the best practice for vineyard recovery was. Knowledge of vineyard recovery we thought was extensive, but when you went into the details, there wasn't enough to actually make an informed decision, which made life very, very difficult. Further, uh, being so early in the season with vintage a fair way away, uh, growers wanted to actually do something straight away. It tends to be a quieter time in January and they'd rather sort of get in there. The big problem with that, of course, is that we're not knowing how the vines are going to respond to fire and that does present a difficulty because you make assumptions that perhaps um, the vineyard's not going to be affected in the same way. But what we've found in hindsight is there's, there's a huge variability and that depends on a lot of things. That variability of the fire itself, but also within vineyard variability makes a huge difference. So each of those factors led to quite different damage occurring in vineyards. Also their proximity to vegetation adjacent to the vineyard, the amount of grass and cover crop in the vineyards, whether the dripper tubes themselves burnt, the intensity and the duration of the fire within the vineyard, all led to highly variable damage across the region, both between vineyards and within the same vineyard. While there was lots of activity in post-fire cleanup and getting hands-on and, and doing lots of activity, it was difficult to know how best to contribute to the industry and to people that we knew on how to recover best from the fire. So that's really what motivated both myself and Richard to establish some trial work and to get funding through Primary Industry South Australia and from Wine Australia to really provide some information for growers next time that there's a fire, whether that be here in the hills or in South Australia or Australia or globally, as to what the best recovery methods should be and provide some definitive information around that. What growers wanted to know is how quickly they get back into full production. It's very easy to forget though that we've got past uh, summer solstice when vines are actually thinking about going back into dormancy and you're not going to get the same sort of behaviours in vine growth that you would normally have. So the big problem is how can you get that vine to grow enough wood to be able to have something that's producing the following year and that's really difficult in fires at that time of the year and also not knowing how much damage has occurred to buds. The trial at Charleston East is a replicated block design. We've located the trial in both mildly damaged vines and in severely damaged vines. And what we've done there is we've maintained a control which is the standard spur prune of the vineyard. We've introduced a conversion to cane pruning and we've done a full trunk removal and training of a new water chute to re-establish the vine. We then set up two other demonstrations as well. Basically the demonstration was treatment of the vines within three weeks of the fire and then waiting until winter to make the cuts. And what that gives us then is that contrast between actually doing something straight away after the fire and then comparing that with actually putting that treatment in in winter. Whatever your plan to do with a fire damaged vineyard, the first step is to get irrigation reinstated so that you can help the vines recover as quickly as possible and to re-establish their growth patterns. The vines have been heavily stressed and to provide a fully moist soil gives them an optimal chance for the vines to regrow, uh, whether it be through the trunk or from, the, from buds that are above ground, or in fact, in many cases where damage is more severe, you'll find that the vines actually force growth from below ground. Then it's important for growers to monitor 
vine recovery and how well vines are growing post the fire to understand the degree of damage that's been sustained. At the same time, it's important to think about your long-term plans for the property. Have you got the varietal mix right? Are the vines in good health before the fire? Is your trellis and other infrastructure in good condition? So that you can make an informed choice for where to invest for vineyard recovery. The other key factor that we found from managing vines after a fire was that it's really important to leave all fresh growth for the season to maximize the opportunity for vines to store carbohydrates in that following winter. We saw some examples both with our demonstration and with some other commercial properties in the area where vines had been trained and shoot selected to promote strong growth in the three to four months after the fire that seemed to deprive vines from carbohydrate reserves for growing the following season. And just reinforcing the fact that with a fire in December, there's not enough time for the vines to be able to re-establish their framework that will actually carry fruit potential for the following year. So at this point we've had two full growing seasons since the Cudley Creek fire and the trial sites have given us some really valuable results. In the context of the demonstration sites for the timing of trunk renewal, after two years we've seen no advantage in going early immediately after the fire compared to waiting until winter to undertake that trunk renewal process. Neither treatment produced grapes in the first year of trial and in the second year of growth there was equivalent grape production from both the early and the winter trunk renewal treatments. Having established that it's best to wait and see how vines perform and have re-established the trunks, it's now time to think about the case of minor and moderate damage. What we found from our pruning trial at the Charleston East Vineyard was that in mildly damaged vines Continuing spur pruning as a standard practice is a reasonable option for managing those vines after fire damage. There hasn't been a big impact on the bunch zone and so the bud viability from that renewal zone in a spur pruned vine is going to be reasonable. In contrast, moderate to highly damaged vines have been impacted on that cordon level quite significantly and we've shown with our trials that spur pruning does not respond well and that cane pruning has limited success because those same renewal buds have been damaged. Trunk replacement of course, no crop in the first year afterwards, but interestingly after the second year they were matching the same production levels as we saw with the cane pruning vines. One thing to note with our spur pruning is that we left bud numbers at a similar level to cane pruning. In terms of viticultural observations, by leaving 150% bud numbers and spurs, you can emulate cane pruning, but obviously you've got different bunch structures. You can see in the following images just how the vines look both before and after harvest. In these images, the white colour goes with spur pruning, yellow with cane pruning, and red is trunk renewal, and these are put in here to help you see more clearly the differences in the growth between these vines. The spur pruning vines are still looking as they would in a commercial situation after two years of growth, and are producing. The cane prune vines have managed to recover, possibly because they carried very little crop last year and are now carrying quite a reasonable crop, which is very valuable. One interesting observation, which you can see here, is that trunk renewal vines are looking very similar to the cane prune vines. It's important to understand that all of this trial work has been done on vineyards that are own rooted and that obviously has a major impact in terms of their recovery. So the next steps from here, we've been provided with a third year of funding thanks to extension from Prime Ministry South Australia and from Wine Australia. And so it gives us the opportunity to take those vines through a third season to really understand the longer term impacts of the pruning method and timing for recovery after fire. Particularly we want to thank the growers who have helped us with our trial setups. The input that these people have given to us has been fantastic and I think it's helped us learn a lot more about that process. We'd also like to thank other growers where we've had the chance to see and observe their vineyards at a time when they're feeling quite distressed. It's helped us to understand the impact of the fires and helped us also to provide some useful information about how best to tackle a very difficult situation. Mm -hmm.